thinking about how I'm going to tell you this story. And let's get right into it. What happened is I attended a Thomas John gallery reading a few days ago over Zoom. 111 people in the room, something like that. Four men, the rest are female, $20 a pop. So I'm in the room watching this all go down. I've got multiple videos I can make out of this, out of this gallery reading. I'm going to show you a five minute reading by a woman, not by a woman, but for a woman named Joanne. I have blurred her. I have uh, roboticized her voice and I have removed everything that would make it so that you could find her. Of course, it's all public because if you really wanted to look, you could find it yourself, but I'm, I'm not going to help you. And the reason why I'm doing this, I don't usually, you know, conceal their voices. is because this woman is very vulnerable. It hurts so much to be watching this, knowing fully well what's going on. And I really, I'm telling you, I just know that if I said something, to her, I can't. I, it, it wouldn't change anything. In fact, it would probably make her double down on it. So I don't feel like there's any way I can really help her, except by doing videos like this for people to watch in the future, who um, may have already gone through it or or would be going through it, and then they could be forewarned. Um, but I don't think there's anything I can really do to help this specific person. But I, I want you to know that I blurred it. Now, what I'm going to show you first, so let's show you first, is that this woman, who's a huge fan of Thomas John's, had posted on Thomas John's, you know, uh, Facebook page. It says, I'm going to be doing an event on this day at this time. Get your tickets. And she posted on there saying, she got her ticket. Now, this was done a day before um, the event. So let me show you what this looks like. I blurred out her name. But I will show you so you can see how we know ahead of time that she's going to be getting a reading. And it's down here at the bottom. I already have a ticket and I am excited. See this? I already have a ticket. And I am excited. You bet she's excited. She's going to get a reading. I know darn well she's going to get a reading because she posted this on Thomas John's um, thread of people who are going to be going to the event. And I, we've been following Thomas John and seeing this happen so many times for years. This is what he does. So I've blurred it all out. But what I can tell you underneath this is her not only her first name and her last name, but her maiden name. And they're not common names. It's not Joe Brown Wood or anything like that. It is, a, they're names that if you put them into Google, which I did, are going to pull up her family members and information about her family. She's not aware of this. I, I'm sure she's she's just a sweet person who is not believed that Thomas John would go to this extent and do anything like this to her. I'm sure she could, she it would never dawn on her that somebody would take advantage of a person who is grieving. It, it, I From all the people I've talked to over the years, I'm sure that's her, her thought is nobody, nobody would have taken advantage of her like this right? So we know that he does and he's he does it all the time. In fact, in this gallery reading of all the other readings that he did, well, we haven't finished the investigation of looking into everyone. It's only been a few days, but everyone we've looked at so far, he's looked up their social media and did a Google search on them. So now Thomas John knows ahead of time who this woman is. He knows her first middle, her first name, her last name, and her maiden name. 
A Google search pulls up everything. Uh, we know that, oh, let me show you this. This is always so cool. I'm going to show you this because this is something a lot of people just, they just don't believe me. They do not understand how fast this is. Now, I'm going to show you what happens on Facebook. If you're using Facebook, you, first thing I look for is photographs. That's where I go is go through old photographs. But this is another trick that, that could be used. Heck, I'm teaching you guys all how to be hot readers. Is you go to the person's Facebook page and then you click on search, which is at the top. See, and then you type in words there. Now, the keywords that we use are something like mother, father, mom, dad, brother, sister, anniversary, obituary, son, or in this case, daughter. And you just type it in and you hit enter and things pop up. Now this popped up and I can show you this photograph because this is a, this is not her daughter or anybody of the sort. It's a, it's a picture from the American Cancer Society. And so, you know, it's not somebody personal to her, but what ends up happening is that our target did not um, make this post. What pulled up was her niece had made a post and then it got shared on Joanne's, that's the target, Facebook page because she's tagged. She got tagged by her niece. And when she did that, it pops up in a search. And it pops up because of these words, lost her daughter, because the word daughter is in there. That's what pops up. So in seconds, I have her daughter had died. And I also find Keegan and Matt's names. And that is her, her daughter, her granddaughter, Joanne's granddaughter, and her son-in-law, Matt, the, the widow of her daughter. So that was like seconds, just seconds to to find all that information. And that is all Thomas John needs. That is it. He doesn't need to know a dime more than that. And people are constantly arguing with me. I don't know why, because I keep showing my work and every video I do, it shows you how easy this is, how it's seconds to find this information. It, and I, I, I don't understand why nobody believes me when I'm showing you. It's right there. Go to your own Facebook page. Go to your friend's Facebook page and do what I'm doing and you will find how easy it is. Okay, now here, let me show you something else. Here, right here, this is uh, the obituary that pulled up. When I put the woman, Joanne's first maiden and last name into a Google search, this is what pulled up. Her daughter, Keegan, who shares. So this is her daughter who died. And this is Keegan, that were her, you know, the granddaughter. This is all, all very personal information, which is why I blurred it all out. But if you, if I was to show it to you, if you were to do the same thing I did and look and figure this all out and go through and read about what happened, there is not only a, a massive obituary for this daughter, but it's got personal stuff in there. You know, things she liked to do, her hobbies, her, her, her work, how much she was loved, her in-laws, her, um, her siblings, her mother and father, and on and on and on. And then when you get into the obituary and you read the people who've written underneath it saying how much they admired her, how much they loved her, how they had great memories of her, every single one of those posts to a grief vampire like Thomas John is just perfect for him to be able to relate back to his to the grieving, grieving mother who does not know what he's doing. And she'll turn around and say, there's no way he could have known that. There's no way he could have known about my daughter's hobbies. There's no way he could know about her nicknames. There's no way. 
this is maybe 30 seconds of my work. 30 seconds to find this information. So let's go to the reading. And I get upset. I'm sorry, you guys. I get upset because this makes me so upset. This is just last week. Not even last week. It was a few days ago. And I've been working on this for years. People buy these readings and they don't Google before they do it. They just go for it. So let's go to the reading. So keep in mind, the first thing I'm going to show you is Thomas John has said, who in this reading, who in this this 100 plus people has a Matthew and a Keegan? Who has that? And she says, I do. And he calls on her. So now, to be extremely clear, he already knows he's going to call on this woman. He already has done his research. The day before, or 10 minutes before he signed on, he's already done his research. So he knows fully well who he's calling on. Her Zoom screen name is right there. He knows who it is he's going to call on. And he knows what he's going to say. So here's this very vulnerable woman who says, those are for me. So that's where we're going to start. I'm going to interrupt this a few times to make sure I point out some things that you should be paying attention to. If I miss something, please let me know in the comments. I'm happy to be corrected and I'm ha happy to be informed. So let's get started with this. It's five minutes, but like I said, I'm going to interrupt it a few times. And again, I've blurred everything out. I've changed her voice and her name is, is off the screen. So you shouldn't be able to do it. All you're going to know is her name is Joanne. Um, my daughter passed away and her husband was Matthew and my granddaughter is Keegan. And did you have those other names, Zach, Joanne? Zach is my son. Now, and you said your daughter has died? Correct. So this is your daughter who passed that you were very close to? Oh, very close. Okay. And um, do you understand also that she's talking about you getting closer to your um, to your granddaughter? Have you been doing that? Yes. Okay. So you're wanting to get closer to your granddaughter. Do you spend a lot of time with your granddaughter? Yes, not as much as I used to because um, my son-in-law now has a fiance, but he's but it's it's a good relationship. He still lets me see her. About you being very, very, very lonely in a way. Okay, I want to play that back to you guys to hear that little bit. But this little bit right here, who does not want to be closer to their granddaughter, especially they're going to admit it with a group of people. She's she's lost her daughter just in like the last couple of years. Her daughter has died of cancer. We know that it's on her Facebook page. And she is um, in a very vulnerable position. Because losing a child is horrible. Well, losing somebody you love, even a pet, is horrible. But losing a child, my goodness. So she has this granddaughter, the only child, her only grandchild. And Thomas John is like, were you close to your daughter? Did you want to be close to your granddaughter? Do you see your granddaughter? I mean, that's an awful lot of questions he's asking for somebody who should just know. He's speaking to the dead, right? So <laughs> I just, I'm laughing because it's so ridiculous. I'm not laughing to make fun of this woman who's in a very vulnerable state. So this is called a motivated sitter. She has got her ticket. She's shown up, cleared off her schedule so she can spend two hours sitting here listening to Thomas John and other people. She stayed the whole time. I watched her. And when he calls on her and tells her that it's her daughter's coming through, she's just sunshine and, and smiles and, and so on. When you're a motivated sitter, as she is, in other words, you are so excited about getting a reading and you're going to get a reading. You want a reading so bad that look how much information she told him. And she will continue to do so. If you ask her later, she'll say, oh, I didn't say anything. I didn't tell him anything. That's because they don't look at these videos and they don't they don't take recordings and, and so on. But she gave him a lot. 
and I've blurred it, but she's giving him a ton of feedback just within her smiles and her nodding and, and, and all other kinds of uh, visual things she's telling him with her reading. She's willing to believe anything and she's willing to, to try to make things fit as you will see in the next few parts here. Listen to this part that where where he just like sticks a knife in her. Listen. About you being very, very, very lonely in a way. So I don't know if that just, do you think that just has to do with your loss and stuff? Or are you just kind of lonely? Yeah. Uh -huh. um, and they're also talking about your daughter's actually showing me this, something where you might be moving. I don't know if this is right right now. It could also be spending time in another area. So I don't know, are you are you considering moving at all? No, I'm going on vacation like that too. Okay. But I'm, I'm hoping that Matthew and Keegan will be moving shortly. Then that's what it is, That that's what it is. Cause I'm like- somebody, Oh, they will? Yes. Oh, so, good. So why is that important to you? Cause they would come closer to you? No, it's important because um, I want them to have a house and they're going to be looking and um, they rent right now a small apartment. Okay, then I think it, I think it is them, Joanne. I no kidding, you think it's them. First off, you're very, very, very lonely. Do you think it could be because your daughter has died and you are alone? You think she might be very, 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 very lonely? Thanks, Thomas, for pointing that out. And what is this moving thing? You might be moving. Your daughter, your dead daughter, is telling me that you might be moving. Or you might be going away somewhere to live for a while. And the motivated sitter, this Joanne person, is trying to make it fit. Because she wants Thomas John to be right. Because she wants Thomas John to be communicating with her daughter. So she says... Well, it might be because I'm going on vacation. That's not what he said. Are you going on vacation? Well, tell us where you're going on vacation. Where is she going, Thomas? Can you tell her? No, you can't tell her. Why can't you tell her? You're moving versus going on vacation. Those are, those are quite different things. And then she says, oh, it's my son-in-law is going to be, he's going to try to buy a house. And I hope so, because that way they won't be renting an apartment anymore. And he says, yes, that must be it. Think about what he said. He said, your daughter, your dead daughter says, you, you, Joanne, you mom are moving. And then it becomes, no, my widowed husband and my daughter are going to try to buy a house so give us some advice can you tell us where he's going to get this house can you tell us anything can you tell us no you can't tell us because you do not know thomas john let's go back i think your daughter is kind of coming through and I'm talking about that. That's what it is then. Yeah. So that's, and that's important because it's on your mind, you know? Yeah. It's very much on my mind. Why is your father putting music notes around you? He keeps putting like music notes around your head. Because he always, he could play any instrument by ear. And I loved it. I love listening to him. And okay. it always uh, comes through. He's given me the memory of you guys doing that and stuff. So you would do, you, you, you like doing that or something, right? Oh yeah, I love listening to his music. Okay, yeah. And the main thing I need- Wait a minute here. Okay, so he's putting music notes around you. Okay, this is something Thomas John does. A lot of mediums do this. They, they talk about signs and they'll say things like, oh, he's putting hearts around you. Um, or he's putting, you know, flowers around you. Or he's putting coins around you. He's putting butterflies around you. Well, in this case, he's putting musical notes around you. Why is he doing that? And so the woman who's motivated, she overshares again and accepts that as a hit because she loved her dad and her dad made music and she, he, you know, and she tells, she tells a story, but that's not what he said. 
how could this have been unfalsified? How could it have been falsified? How could we make this wrong? If there was no music in this woman's life and no music whatsoever in the father's life, none, then that's how it would be not true. But of course there's music in the father's life or the daughter's life or both. So when the sitting is over, and if you were to ask Joanne how it went, she would say, Thomas got my dad and how musically inclined he is and how he was able to just repeat music. He could just pick up anything and he could play it. He had the most amazing ear. She would say, that's what Thomas John said. But you and I know that's not what he said. He said, he's putting musical notes around you. In other words, music. So that means nothing. It's just a trope. Same thing with the signs. That's going to be coming up here soon. So um, they they talk about these things as signs. She's sending you signs. Well, I've been doing this a lot of years. And the idea of signs could be finding a penny. And then you look at the penny. And the penny has a year on it that could mean anything. It could be birthday, birth year, death day, death year, year you had surgery, year you moved, year you got married, year you got engaged, year somebody graduated. I mean, it could be anything. Any year on there is going to be relatable to somebody. I mean, there's only so many years in a person's lifetime. It's not like it's a, a you find on the ground a penny from, you know, 1804 or something like that. It's going to be something in the last in the lifetime of the person or if they've died it's going to be current and then you will associate the year with something's happening in your life so if you found a 2023 um coin on the ground and dad died in 2020 well then you would just say oh well he knows that in 2023 my son graduated high school and that's the sign see what i'm saying a sign could be uh, butterflies i see butterflies and those are sent from your daughter it could be cardinals or some other kind of bird or a feather those are sent from your daughter or it could be you heard a, a song she used to like playing and that's a sign from your daughter it could be I, I saw a flower that was blooming and that's a sign from your daughter anything could be a sign from your daughter there was a rainbow that is a sign from your daughter so this part she's going to say uh, talk about signs they never specify special specify the signs but the point is, anything can be a sign to somebody who really wants to see a sign and justify the reason why they should be having um, their daughter talk to them. Because she's in grief. This woman is extremely vulnerable and in grief. And and that's the way that goes. And the main thing I'm needing to tell you right now, Joanne, is just that, you know, you're also, uh, Joanne, do you, know, do you have a Matilda? Matilda, no. Or a Maddie or a Carl? Yes, could be yeah i mean oh. so, uh joanne do you have either of those names all right so let's point this out i'm going to stop here just to make sure you understand so thomas john is in a gallery reading there's 100 people in here he already knows who's who he's going to go to first he's already had the research done or somebody's sending him the research through um private private ways right now and so probably the next person who's coming up is going to have a Matilda, a Maddie, and a Carl. And um, this is his way, because I've followed him for years, this is his way of moving from one reading to the other. It's his way of saying, okay, Joanne, got to go now. Um, your dead people, your father and your your daughter don't want to talk anymore. And now a, I'm, a Carl, a Matilda, and a, and a Maddie have, have shown up. So got to go. Catch you later. You know, that's kind of how it works. I did cut out something in here and it was some other woman saying, that's mine. And um, I cut it out just for time reasons and so on, not to get distracted, but that's what's going on. So he's going to go to the, to the other reading, but Joanne's not ready to let go. And you'll notice that Joanne said, is this somebody who's passed? You know, Maddie, Matilda, or Carl? He's like, well, it could be. In other words, anybody, it doesn't matter to him because he's, like I said, he's ready to go to the next reading. And um, 
he's just kind of hoping that she's just going to say, no, no, nobody in my family is any of these, but Joanne's not letting it go. She's going, she's a motivated sitter and she's going to do her darn best to find somebody who fits. And she says, I have a grandfather that was a Carl, but he died a long time ago. I don't know what, how, if, if you're talking to the dead, they, it doesn't matter if they died recently or, well, I guess it does if they died recently, but you know, somebody has been gone a long time versus somebody has gone a few years in the world of mediumship. It, you know, so, but she's trying to make it fit by saying it was a long time ago and I have a grandfather and Thomas Sean's like, Oh, okay. He's trying to get out of this reading. Okay. He wants to do, these are $20 readings. And like I said, there's a hundred people in the room, hundred and something people in the room. He's only going to do maybe six, maybe seven people. That's another thing people tell me. They say, well, how is he supposed to have memorized, you know, a hundred people's Facebook pages? It's like, well, he's only going to do a few readings, like five or six. How hard is it to jot that down on a piece of paper right before you start? And six people, you know, it's not that hard. And then now watch his, his, his um, demeanor and how he talks. He seems very distracted, like he's reading something else, like he's ready to get over this. And he's not really paying attention. You'll notice this in his voice pattern, the way he, he speaks. So so pay attention to this. Um, oh, Carl is, was my grandfather. He was okay. passed a long time ago. So the main thing I'm needing to tell you also is it does feel like spirit wants to explain to you that, and I'm sure you know this, but it just kind of helps for extra validation. But they are saying that you are... Um, definitely being watched over. Um, you have a lot of spirit guides around you. I don't know if sometimes you feel a little bit not as connected to that, or I don't know if that sometimes is hard for you. Um, it is. Do you, yeah, do you struggle with that a little bit? I, yeah, a little bit. I mean, I, I feel she's always there. I see some signs, but sometimes I want more signs. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I'm reading them right. Oh, really? Okay. Okay, got you. So you, you, okay. So you, you're needing to trust in that a little bit. Is that right? Is that, is, is that right? You're, you second. Yes. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, that's good. I mean, that's good that they're bringing that up. So I do think that that is a, just a thing that they're wanting to share with you and just say to you, um, you know, we, you know, we, you know, we want you to know um that they yeah that they that that, that 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 yeah i think that's just kind of the way that they just kind of want to bring that up and stuff so okay well i think that's good um, um, okay so i just hope you were paying attention there to his demeanor and the way he just kind of was rambling there it's a send-off this is he's 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 saying i'm done joanne with you and i'm moving on to the next person carl matilda and maddie's people and so he's giving her a send off, like a, a soft send off by saying, I just want you to know, and you probably already know this, but they're watching over you, you're loved, you know, your family's around you, they send you signs, pay attention to the signs, okay, have a nice day. That's what he's trying to do and get the information for the next person who's going to be coming on um, the, the next reading he's going to do. But Joanne's not ready to let go. She's got an additional question. And you can see how, how he's distracted about it. And he's not really interested in, like I said, it was kind of autopilot what he was saying. is like, well, you know, yeah, they're watching over you. Okay. Uh, look for more signs. And she's like, well, I don't quite get enough signs. Or I don't know how to interpret them. And he's like, really? I mean, I don't even know what that was about. Can you just tell her what signs it is she should be looking for? Is it butterflies? Is it coins? Is it is it more music notes? Is it a favorite song? Is it is she gonna you know give her something a little more firm? Okay, now this is getting to the point where I said is really shows how vulnerable this poor Joanne person is. She just seems like such a nice person. I just want to hug her and tell her it's going to be okay, right? But listen to the things she said. Um, one, one, if you don't mind, one quick question. Um, I had met with the medium, and my daughter had told me through the medium that she was going to send me some people in my life that will make me very happy. 
Do you, can you tell if that has happened yet or is it in my future? I think it started to happen, but I don't feel like it's fully happened. But okay. I feel like it started to happen a little bit. So yes, I do feel okay. like I think it started to happen, but I don't know if it's fully happened, if that makes sense to you. Yeah, it does. Thank you. All right. Honey. I love you, by the way. I watch all your shows. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. That's so sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and that's the end of that reading. So thinking about this, because this is a few days ago and I've been thinking about it. Okay, number one, she's a huge fan. She's watched all the shows and she doesn't seem to realize that Seatbelt Psychic is not him picking up a, um, people in Uber, right? She hasn't figured that out about him them being actors or any of that. Right, lots of people haven't figured it out. They're constantly arguing with me on YouTube. Um, but think about what she just said. Okay, and there was another point in here. I didn't, bring, didn't mention it, but something about her father, and how he comes through often. Um, that little snippet's in there. You might have to rewind it. I don't want to go back and find it. But her father comes through often. In other words, she gets lots of readings enough that her father has come through. Well, judging from her age, she's at least my age. So her 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 parents probably are, are deceased. So it's a really good guess that another medium who isn't hot reading would have determined that her her father had died that's common she says that this other medium told her no her daughter told her her dead daughter told her through a medium now think about that think about just what i just said her deceased daughter told her through a medium in other words the medium could say almost anything to influence the mother. Sell your property, move away, you know, donate everything to um, to give it all your money away, um, cut your hair. I mean, it could be anything. Your daughter said, this is an important message from your daughter. And she says, send, she loves the medium who's talking to you right now. And can you send um, your, your money to her or send the money to this medium's charity? She's building a foundation. I mean, anything. Once they become under the influence of a medium, if it's being said through somebody they believe is they're in contact with, you know, the, her dead daughter. You can influence a person when they're in grief. So, so just that right there is painful. But here's what the medium told her, her daughter had said. And some people, some people are going to come into her life that are going to make her happy. And she does not know if that's happened already or if it's going to happen in the future. And Thomas, can you tell me are these people in my life now and they're making me happy or are they not here yet? And I'm, and I, it's coming up in the future. I mean, what kind of thing is that to say? Well, I mean, that's just really taking advantage of a vulnerable person, setting her up. And Thomas doesn't even give her any good advice. He's like, well, I don't know. It could be happening. He's already checked out. He's already thinking about the next reading he's going to do. He's on autopilot. And he's checked out. He's not giving her any good advice. So nice people coming into her life. What does that even mean? What kind of nice people come into a person's life? Cults? Multi-level marketing scams? Romance scams? Think about all the con people. This woman's obviously vulnerable. Think about all the con people in that can come into this woman's life. She's right there on Facebook. She doesn't have any controls of her Facebook page. She she probably gets uh, you know fifty private messages a day from people trying to sell her cryptos, uh, cryptocurrency, or um, you know romance adventures or who knows what. And if 
somebody comes into her life and says, you know, and is nice to her, because of course, con people are always going to be nice to you. How she has no, she, her, her, her uh, guardrails are completely down and she could easily be manipulated. Thomas didn't help her at all, not a bit. She's so vulnerable. And how is it that she doesn't know if these people are in her life now and she's happy? If they were in your life and you were happy and they're new people, then you would be happy. So in other words, she's not happy. She is. She said she's lonely because Thomas John told her you're very lonely, 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 lonely. Is it because your daughter died? Is it because you're alone? And we know she's alone because of her Facebook page. So here's Thomas John sitting in his recently moved into home in North Hollywood. That cost a pretty penny or his rent's costing him a pretty penny. Not cheap. Paid for by donations by people like Joanne. And she is getting multiple readings. We know that. We know that she's in grief. We know she's vulnerable. We know that her, her son-in-law is remarrying. She thinks it's a good thing. But, um, you know, that's going to move her a little farther away, a little more lonely. Granddaughter is probably growing up and, you know, she doesn't see her as much as she'd like to. And on, on and on. So that's why I said I'm really hiding this woman's, her voice and her uh, name and her, her image. I, I, you know, I really don't know about doing these videos. Is it any good? Is this helpful? I don't think most people watch the end to the end as far as I'm doing right here. I just don't think so. Am I even speaking to anybody other than maybe a few of my friends? I don't know. And this woman will never hear my message. I care about what happens to her. I know Thomas John doesn't care. And I think anybody who's listening this far probably cares about what happens to this poor woman. She's a very vulnerable woman who's going through this pretty much by herself. And she's just getting reading after reading after reading with mediums trying to be in touch with her daughter so her daughter can advise her and help her. It's, it's just really hard. Really, it is, you guys. I think about it when I'm at these gallery readings or when I see somebody post on Thomas John or whoever, whoever hot reader of the day is on their social media and say, I'm going to be there. And I know darn well that the, the psychic is looking at that post going, ah, oh, let's check out her Facebook page. Let's give her a Google. And I think to myself, should I write to this woman when I saw her message pop up, send her a private message on Facebook and say something like, I know Thomas John's going to read you tomorrow in your reading. And I think Keegan and Matt are going to come through. And when she says, when she responds, I would have to follow up and say, I know because I read it on your Facebook page. I'm not your Facebook friend. And I did a Google of your name. And there it is. And I know that this psychic, Thomas John, this grief vampire, is going to do the same thing. What do you think she would say? She'd probably be freaked out. What if he didn't read her? Then I'm going to look like a stalker. I'm going to look like a stalker even if he didn't even if he does read her. It's probably going to freak her out and it, it wouldn't do any good. 
as I said, I'll, she'll probably just double down. You can't help somebody who does not want help. At least I think it would be very hard. If you have any advice for me, I sure would love to hear it myself. And I don't need to talk to my dead family members to get that advice. I have people who love me and people who are here for me who can advise me. And I'm not always sure where to proceed with these videos. I can show you these hot reading. I can show how he's manipulating vulnerable people. And yet they're falling head over heels for this guy. And I can't do anything. I can do very little. So hopefully you'll leave me some comments. Maybe I missed a bunch of things. Never, never fails. I hang up, hang up the video, upload it. And <laughs> I think, oh my gosh, I forgot those things. And somebody will leave something in the comments. And I say, oh, I either forgot to see it. I forgot to say something or I didn't even see that. And you caught it and I didn't. Thanks, you guys. Please like, please share. Please hit the little ding button and um leave me comments i really would appreciate it thanks everybody